Welcome to Thurman Action at Gulfstream Park and happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm Katie Stazak and today we celebrate the St. Patty's Day holiday as the start of a six day race week here at Gulfstream. It's a beautiful day. Let's get right to the track and weather conditions. The main track is fast and the turf course is firm. Tuesday's St. Patrick's Day opener is a $20,000 claimer. Phillies and mares four-year-olds and upward, which have not won two races, will be going a mile and a 16th on the turf course. Scratch the three and the seven. They're off. Transformer came out well, so too Dunkirk's best, and then it's pleasure on the inside. And on the far outside, Ellicottville goes up in fourth. Then comes Cleveland, who races down at the rail just to the inside of Diana's Daisy moving into the turn. Boston Gardens out there three wide, and the trailer is My Dear Regina. So they make their way on the first turn, where it's Dunkirk's best leading Transformer. These two setting the pace, and they're a half length apart. Three lengths ahead of Ellicottville, running in third by another two and a half. Then it's Pleasure in fourth, followed by Cleveland to the inside of Diana's Daisy. The pace is very hot here at 22 and three opening quarter mile. Two and a half lengths more back to Boston Garden and My Dear Regina at the back of the field. So they're moving up the backstretch at a swift pace and it's Dunkirk's best and Transformer going at it on the lead with Ellicottville three lengths behind them. Two and a half lengths back to Pleasure running in fourth. Then Cleveland to the inside. Diana's Daisy is next. Then comes My Dear Regina and Boston Garden. 45 and three was the half mile as the field races for the far turn. And it is Transformer on the outside. Dunkirk's best. Now the pack is closing in and Cleveland is right behind them on the rail. Cleveland finds running room too. Cleveland got through on the inside under Edgar Zayas running up the rail to take the lead as Ellicottville moves up into second. These two are now 1-2, and Diana's Daisy comes on with an inside run, and they're into the stretch. Cleveland, Diana's Daisy splitting horses. Ellicottville, third on the outside. Final furlong, Cleveland. On the outside, Diana's Daisy, Ellicottville, and from far behind, My Dear Regina finishing fast. It's Cleveland, My Dear Regina on the outside, and Diana's Daisy. Here's My Dear Regina and Alan Garcia to win. Over Cleveland, Diana's Daisy and Ellicottville sweeps by the field on the outside to get up in the first race. Alan Garcia gets the win for trader Eduardo Caramori and owners Horace Regina, LLC. My Dear Regina paid $12.60 to win. That'll take us right to the second race, an $8,000 claimer. Phillies and mares, four-year-olds and upward, will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. Scratch the four, Cece in red. They're off. Sweet Cup and Lucasta came out of there the best. Sweet Cup to the front. Lucasta will sit second early by two. Then Double Desert in third, followed by Princess Appeal out Wildcat into the outside and Secret Memory racing at the rail. And it is Sweet Cup who clears. Sweet Cup a length and a half to Lucasta as they speed toward the half mile pole. Double Desert with three and a half lengths to make up just ahead of Princess Appeal. Out Wild Catton to the outside in Secret Memory. They went 22 and four for the opening quarter mile. And Sweet Cup has the lead. Luke Costa closer now, only a half length apart. Double Desert, well within striking range in third, two lengths off the lead. Then Out Wild Catton to the outside, Princess Appeal and Secret Memory at the back of the field. It is still Sweet Cup and Luke Costa, one, two since the beginning and Double Desert's coming after them three wide. The half was in 46 flat. They're into the stretch. And now, on the outside, Luke Costa to the front. Luke Costa takes over. Sweet Cup gives way. Double Desert is coming. They're into the final 16th now. Luke Costa, Double Desert on the outside. Sweet Cup at the rail. Luke Costa's got it. Luke Costa and Luca Panici to win. And then it was Double Desert, followed by Sweet Cup and Princess Appeal. Lucasta holds off the even money favorite Double Desert in the second race. Luca Panici was in the irons for trainer Monty Brinsley and owner P.F. Quadrado. Lucasta returned $16.60 for the win. And we'll be right back with more racing after these messages. Gulfstream Park is one of Florida's top entertainment destinations. Mixing restaurants, clubs, a casino, and international boutique shops with world-class racing. In a lavish, sun-drenched setting with the feel of a Mediterranean village, Gulfstream is a leading year-round entertainment and tourist destination and the home of luxury residences in 2014. The Stronach family, owners of Gulfstream Park, 
is committed to the sport of thoroughbred racing and the grace, spirit, and generosity of the horse. Welcome back. Here's the third race, a $6,250 claimer. Billy's and Mare's four-year-olds in Upward, which have not won three races, will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. Scratch the four, Ariel's Flyer. Also, Leroy They're Nelson off. will be aboard the two, Giacomo's Aria. Golden Friendships out quickly for the lead. Blue Temptation came out running in second. Solitary is third. And they've separated themselves five lengths already from Centella and BB Valentine. And then it's time for Harlan, who was second last up the backstretch just ahead of Giacomo Zaria. And now they head to the half mile pole. And it is Golden Friendships joined up front by Blue Temptation, who goes right on by. Blue Temptation has taken the lead. And it looks like something's gone wrong with Golden Friendships, who's plummeting through the field. The quarter went in 22 and 3 fifths seconds. The leader is Blue Temptation now by three quarters of a length. On the outside, Solitary goes up. Centella waits for running room. Third down toward the rail. Then BB's Valentine, Giacomo's Aria. Time for Harlan. And Golden Friendships has been pulled up as they come to the top of the stretch. And it is Blue Temptation turning for home on the lead. And here comes Solitary up alongside. And right behind them, Centella is trying to come and get them. Solitary, Blue Temptation, and Centella and Centella's coming up after Solitary, who keeps the lead. Solitary has it coming down to the wire. Solitary holds off Centella. Then Blue Temptation, BB Valentine fourth. Solitary puts away Centella to take the third race. Leandro Gonsalves was the winning jockey for trainer Milton Wolfson and owners NTS Stable Inc. Solitary paid $7.60 to win. The fourth race is a $12,500 maiden claimer. Three-year-olds will be going a mile on the main track. Scratch the nine, Prince Runner, also Emma Jane Wilson, jumps aboard the five, fourth dimension. They're off. Purpose came out well from that far outside post. Here comes Drimmer through on the inside with some early speed. As the field races out of the chute, coming through his fourth dimension in between horses, too, to be a part of the early pace along with Vanovich. So they leave the chute, enter the backstretch, Drimmer on the inside, just a narrow lead here, right alongside his fourth dimension in second. And then it's Vanovich in third, far outside, purpose fourth by two and a half, just for fun, follows fifth. And then it's one proud dude, Chironi to the outside, Quantum and Phil's comprise, and the trailer up the backstretch, West Ride, 23. And one was the quarter, heading to the half mile pole with a long shot, Drimmer leading the way. And Drimmer has opened up a two and a half length lead here on fourth dimension as they race for the turn. Then Valovich on the outside, just for fun, the favorite purpose fifth of 45 and three half mile, and purpose is not keeping up right now. And then comes one proud dude, followed by Chironi and Phil's comprise. Drimmer setting this hot pace. Fourth dimension on the outside comes to take on Drimmer. These two head and head up front just for fun. Third, Valovich fourth. Purpose not going on today. Dropping back through the field. Drimmer the one to catch. Here's just for fun and Tyler Gaffleone under a full head of steam on the outside and draws up alongside of Drimmer who tries to hold on to this lead. Drimmer on the rail just for fun on the outside. These two well clear the others just for fun to the front. Just for fun, and Tyler Gaffleone take the lead, and they're going to go on and win. It's just for fun over Drimmer, and then came Fourth Dimension and Valovich. Just for fun draws off to take the fourth race. Tyler Gaffleone was in the irons for trainer Gustavo Delgado and owners PNG Stables LLC and GDS Racing Stable Inc. Just for fun returned $7.20 for the win. That brings us to the fifth race. This is a starter allowance with an optional claiming tag of $12,500. Four-year-olds and upward will be going seven and a half furlongs on the turf course. No scratches or jockey changes to report. And we'll join this race in progress. The far outside concert stage, Becky's kitten in between horses, and the trailer is startup. They're tightly packed as they make their way to the back stretch in pursuit of Oak Bluffs and Luis Saez. Purely boy, the favorite three quarters of a length behind as they enter the back stretch. Then it's open outcry, Sweet Lou to the inside, Lighthouse Sound, Lakota Brave. Concert stage just three and a half lengths behind at this stage, and then Becky's Kitten and Startup. And the field continues their way up the back stretch here, where the leader is Oak Bluffs. Oak Bluffs has been there all the way so far. A three-quarter length advantage over Purely Boy running in second. Open outcry, third to the outside, Sweet Lou. 
rides the rail in fourth, two and a half lengths off the lead. And then it's Lighthouse Sound, concert stage to the outside. Start up Lakota Brave and Becky's Kitten around the far turn. And they still have to come and get Oak Bluffs. Purely boys, a half length behind. Outside of them, Lighthouse Sound comes into the stretch three wide. Sweet Lou cuts the corner in fourth. And then it's start up and they're into the stretch. And it's still Oak Bluffs. Oak Bluffs in front. Leads the way a length and a half. Now opening up by two. Purely boy is second. And then it's Sweet Lou. And to the outside comes Lighthouse Sound. It's Oak Bluffs. Oak Bluffs won it. Lighthouse Sound edges out purely boy for second, Sweet Lou fourth. Oak Bluffs runs off with the fifth race. Luis Saez gets the win for trainer Jamie Ness and owners Jagger Inc. Oak Bluffs paid $11.80 to win. There's a new day dawning in Florida. Never before has a Breeders' Cup Classic winner retired to stud in the Sunshine State. Until now. Adina Springs presents three-time Grade 1 winner and earner of over $4 million, Fort Larned. New to Adina Springs South. Glad to have you back with us. Here's the sixth race, a maiden special weight for three-year-old fillies. They'll be going a mile on the main track. They're off. Don't forget about me came out quickly on the outside Garden Princess. These two away with early speed stolen secrets right there on the inside and coming on through to battle for the front as the field races out of the chute. It's Garden Princess, the early leader. On the inside is Stolen Secrets running in second. These two added early. Don't forget about me. Amazing Party on the outside is next. Then comes Lady Serena down at the rail. Break of another two back to nothing but the truth. And then comes Queen's Princess and Loom is at the back of the field as they continue their run up the back stretch. The opening quarter mile goes in 22 and 4 fifth seconds and it's Stolen Secrets and Paco Lopez in front by a neck. Garden Princess on the outside, pressing the pace in second as they race for the turn. Amazing Party is third on the far outside. And now Amazing Party edging up a bit closer to the top two. Also moving up is nothing but the truth on the far outside with a four wide sweeping move toward the front runners. Around the far turn, Garden Princess, Amazing Party, nothing but the truth on the far outside. Then Stolen Secrets and Don't Forget About Me. They've kicked away from Lady Serena and then it's Loom and Queen's Princess. They went 46 flat for a half mile and they're coming to the top of the stretch. And it is Garden Princess. Garden Princess still clings to the lead. Nothing but the truth on the far outside. Don't forget about me. Runs on between those two. Garden Princess has the lead, though. On the outside, it's Don't Forget About Me. Garden Princess has it. And with plenty left, Garden Princess over Don't Forget About Me. And then it was Stolen Secrets and Nothing But the Truth. Garden Princess draws off nicely to take the sixth race. Javier Castellano was aboard for trainer Bill Mott and owners Whisper Hill Farm, LLC. Garden Princess returned $7.80 to win. And after the race, winning jockey Javier Castellano said, it really helped having a background with Garden Princess in this race. Um, always, you know, help a little bit when you ride a little bit the horse and you get used to what, what's going on. Last time I rode the horse first time, I didn't know much about it. He impressed me and the way he broke out of the gate last time. And I learned a lot sobre, about the skill. Today, I mean, I'm very fortunate. She brought well out of the gate, good post. I hook I do a spray a little bit, but I wrote to control the pace. I was aside. And the way she did it, very impressive because you can see in the tone of her horn when you ask her, he responded so well today. The seventh race is a $50,000 claimer, four-year-olds and upward, which have not won. Two races will be going a mile and a 16th on the turf course. Scratch the four, Melville. They're off. Sportscaster out for the lead. On the outside comes Boss Gone and Downey Gap is away running in third. They're followed by Nest of Pirates, then Break Even Analysis on the inside and Maritime Pulpit. Quite the issue, and Sunset District will do their running later. They're at the back of the pack, six lengths off the lead, and they're led by Sportscaster into the first turn. Sportscaster on top a length and a half, Downey Gap second. Boss Gone third to the outside. 
Break even analysis rides the rail. Nest of Pirates fifth alongside. Now three lengths off the lead and two lengths ahead of Maritime Pulpit. Three lengths more back to Sunset District. Quite the issue at the back of the field at 24 and two. Opening quarter mile for Sportscaster and Corey Lannery, who lead the way by a length over Downey Gap in second. Break even analysis, third on the inside of Boss Gone. These two, two lengths ahead of Nest of Pirates in fifth. And they're followed by Sunset District, who gains ground inside of Maritime Pulpit, while Quite the Issue continues to lag behind the field, now 10 lengths behind after a 48 and two half mile. Sportscaster into the far turn in front. Here's break even analysis to put the pressure on now. And there within a neck around the far turn, break even analysis on the outside. Sportscaster keeps the lead. Three lengths to Boss gone. Maritime Pulpit is fourth. Then comes Sunset District, followed by Nest of Pirates, and they're coming to the top of the stretch. And it is Sportscaster and Break Even Analysis turning for home together. Sportscaster gets away by two now. Break Even Analysis is second, and then comes Maritime Pulpit, followed by Boss Gone. Sportscaster and Corey Lannery coming home a winner here. Sportscaster pulling away in the end over Break Even Analysis. And then a tight photo for third between a late closing Sunset District and Maritime Pulpit. Sportscaster turns it on in the seventh race. He wins this one easily with Corey Lannery in the irons. Dale Romans was the winning trainer for owners 44 racing. Sportscaster paid $9 to win. On to the eighth race now. This is a $35,000 maiden claimer. Three-year-olds will be going a mile and a 16th on the turf course. They're off. Run Saichi on the outside and Malzahn, and now Malzahn's gonna take the lead. Dr. Nefario came out running in third, Don Tirso Q, Laurentino, and on the far outside, it's Camerton Hall. Crown Holiday is after that, and then it's back to Shamrock Road, who is next. And they're being followed on the inside by Starship Zeus, and not handling the turn there was Depute the King, who went wide and carried out Dragon Master. They went 24 and 2 for the opening quarter mile, and Malzahn kicks on to a three length lead over Run Saichi and Laurentino as Dr. Nefario is fourth, five and a half lengths behind, then Don Terso Q. Two lengths farther back, and they're followed by Crown Holiday, who races down on the inside of Camerton Hall. And then it's back to Starship Zeus, Shamrock Road to the outside. Depute the King and Dragon Master continue to race at the back after a 48 flat half mile. And now the field races for the turn. Malzahn's lead is down to three quarters of a length. Run Saichi is second. Laurentino, Dr. Nefario. On the outside comes Camerton Hall, who's charging up three wide. Starship Zeus gets going too. After that, it's Crown Holiday, Don Tirso Q, and Shamrock Road on the outside. Around the far turn, Run Saichi runs for the lead. Three quarters in one, 12 and two, and Run Saichi takes over at the top of the stretch. Camerton Hall on the move. Starship Zeus on the far outside. And then it's Malzahn and Dr. Nefario, and they have to come and get run Saichi with a furlong to go Starship Zeus second on the outside Camerton Hall is third Dr. DeFario fourth behind run Saichi who comes home a winner then Starship Zeus Camerton Hall and Dr. DeFario run Saichi leads them home on top in the eighth race Luis Saez gets his second win of the day this one's for trainer Teresa Pompey and owners my purple hay stables LLC Run Saichi paid $7.40 to win. Welcome back. Here's the ninth race, a starter allowance with an optional claiming tag of $50,000. Three-year-old fillies will be going a mile and a 16th on the turf course. Scratch all of your main track only participants here. That would be the 11, the 12, and the 13. They're off.
Image of Rachel was slow to start. A good beginning for Gorgeous Dream, who goes out to the front. And then it's Summers back on the outside with early speed two. And Twist and Bake on the inside came out running in third position. Moving up in between horses two minia, fourth as they go into the turn. Then outside of two minia, it's Trigger Finger running in fifth. Break of another two to Indy Gita, sixth on the inside. And then comes Julisa. Anita Partner is after that. And then at the back are Princess Zenyi and Image of Rachel. On to the back stretch. And Gorgeous Dream and Javier Castellano lead the way through a 23 and four opening quarter mile. A length and a half advantage here. Twist and Bake is second to the inside as they continue up the backstretch. Summers back is right alongside it. Now outside of them, there goes Julissa. And Julissa is moving up. Trigger fingers in that group as well. And then it's back to Tuminia to the inside who's five lengths off the lead. Anita Partner and Indy Gita after that. Image of Rachel and Princess Zenyi. 47 and four for a half mile. And now they're running for the far turn and it is gorgeous dream in front the lead is a length and a half Julissa to the outside, second, Twist and Bake is third toward the rail. And then it's Trigger Finger in fourth, just two and a half lengths off the lead. Then Anita Partner, two minia to the inside. Princess Zenyi moves up outside of Summer's back. And then it's Indy Gita, an image of Rachel, and they're coming to the top of the stretch. And Gorgeous Dream is still the leader. Gorgeous Dream all the way so far. On the outside, Trigger Finger, Twist and Bake down toward the rail. Then comes Julissa and Anita Partner on the outside. It is still Gorgeous Dream. Another 16th to go. Trigger Finger. Anita Partner coming up on the outside. Gorgeous Dream. Anita Partner down to the line together. Heads apart at the finish. Then it was Trigger Finger in a photo between Princess Zenyi and Indy Gita. Gorgeous Dream hangs on by a nostril to take the ninth race. Javier Castellano gets his second win of the day. This one's for trainer Jose Garoppolo and owners Mary Ann Dennis and Mary Ellen Wolfel. Gorgeous Dream returned $25.40 to win. And after the race, winning owner Mary Ellen Wolfel, who bred and raised Gorgeous Dream, was full of praise for her filly. And we were so thrilled, but when Javier Castellano took out in the front so early on, we said, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, but we felt he knew that she could do it. And then coming around the end, she wouldn't let anyone beat her. Her ears were pinned back and she won. We were just overjoyed. Absolutely. One side comment. This horse, Gorgeous Dream, is Mary Ellen's dream. <laughs> That's where well, the dream comes from. So there's a big um, attachment to this horse. We're the very horse. proud of her. Very proud. It is so unusual a horse can t run out in front the whole we race. We own our mother. On, so. We own the mother's mother. And uh, so it's a family thing. And they've all run well. The 10th and final race of the day is a maiden claimer with a $20,000 tag. Four-year-olds and upward will be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. Scratch the 13, Nakia's Edge. They're off. Wild Mongolia flies out of there. Kirky's Dream is away running in second. George Jett came out third on the far outside, and here comes Malibu Charlie through an opening at the rail. 5.30 is after that as they continue their way up the back stretch. And they're being followed by I Feel Great, Love Dakota Sky in between horses. Three lengths back to Successful Native. And then it's Notional's Wind, followed by Empire Road, Wild Mooch is after that, and Speed Reed is last. And they're racing for the turn with Wild Mongolia on top, a 21 and one first quarter mile. On the far outside, I Feel Great is moving up in second. Love Dakota Sky circling up outside of George Jett. Malibu Charlie needs running room down at the rail. No place to go, and Malibu Charlie is right in behind. Wild Mongolia's got room now. Wild Mongolia, Malibu Charlie on the outside comes on. Love Dakota Sky is third. Wild Mongolia, Malibu Charlie on the outside trying to get Wild Mongolia, but Wild Mongolia keeps digging in. Wild Mongolia on the inside. Got there over Malibu Charlie, and then it was Love Dakota Sky, successful native and I feel great. Wild Mongolia holds off a late charge from Malibu Charlie to take the Tuesday finale. Paco Lopez was aboard for trainer Enabish Gambit and owner's Mongolian stable. Wild Mongolia returned $6.40 to win. And here are the returns from our exotic wagers. The pick four, 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 six hundred thirteen dollars and sixty-five cents. The pick five, four of five, twenty dollars and fifty-five cents. Five of five, two thousand two hundred forty dollars and eighty cents. And the rainbow six, six of six, nine thousand four hundred sixty-six dollars and six cents. The carryover for Wednesday's card. 
$100,841.71. That wraps up Tuesday's action. Tomorrow is Wednesday, and we have 11 races on the schedule, including the Captiva Island Handicap for older female turf sprinters. Sweet Emma Rose will be looking to rebound after fading in the Lightning City Stakes at Tampa Bay Downs on January 24th, and I think she will in her second start off a seven-month layoff. Prior to the freshening, she won the Crank It Up Stakes at Monmouth Park, going wire to wire in the five and a half furlong event. She's run well at Gulfstream in the past, having finished first and second in her two starts over this turf course. And she has plenty of back class too, having finished second in the Group 2 Queen Mary Stakes at Royal Ascot as a two-year-old. Free as a Bird will also run in the Captiva Island. The Ian Wilkes trainee is on a five race winning streak, all in stakes with her most recent win coming in the Buffalo Trace Franklin County Stakes at Keeneland last October. She was set to run in the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint at the end of last year, but she didn't end up making the trip after she had trouble loading on the airplane. She's been fresh and since, and this top quality runner will make her six-year-old debut in this spot. These two will be taken on by local runner Fascinante, who won the Sparkler Stakes at Gulfstream Park West in impressive fashion last November. After being given a freshening of her own, she had a rough trip in the ladies' turf sprint stakes here on February 21st. She should be much improved with a better trip in her second start off the layoff. Hope you got lucky today with your selections. I'll see you right back here tomorrow for the Captiva Island and the rest of the card. Thanks for watching Thoroughbred Action at Gulfstream Park. I'm Katie Stazak.